um, bigger. Um, so, so that's that's one element is what you actually need at your destination. Um, and you know, people are surprised to find like go to Bali. I always think, my God, I spend most of the time looking at the ground because I'm going to fall into a hole. And I always think, God, I could never bring my parents here. There's just there's no terrain that's even everything. And China, when we live like that, sometimes you just don't know, right? So, so that's such a good point. Go on. You know, like um, sometimes you might think, well, I need to bring a stroller only so I can take the car seat around. That's right. That, that, you know, that is a, that's a valid, a valid kind of um, problem. Um, but, you know, like it also might affect where you choose to stay, you know. Yeah. Um, like if you're, if you're going, you say, okay, like let's say you've gone to um, Ho Chi Minh. Yes. <laughs> Obviously, you know, all of these Southeast Asian cities are, are notorious, other than Singapore really, are notoriously bad for, oh, yeah. and KL's fine, but are notoriously bad for strollers. Um, you know, Hong Kong's full of stairs. Everywhere else has just got so many like walkers and 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 whatnot on the footpaths that if you did want to push a stroller, you'd have to move to the road, and no one wants to push a stroller on the road in Bangkok. This is your next guidebook, Elise. What you know? What what is the terrain of every country? Honestly, you don't know till you get there. Yeah, good point. So, um, and so you know, for a lot of a lot of Southeast Asian holidays, you don't want a stroller at all. You know, like a lot of it would be baby wearing. Now, yeah. I, I would never baby wear in a car, um, but you know, you can still bring the car seat along, um, and maybe you just don't have the stroller that attaches to it. Maybe you are choosing a hotel that you can walk to most places or catch public transport. Maybe you're like, yeah, you know what? There's going to be one day, or there are going to be two days on this holiday where we're going to do like lots of car related things. And so maybe you're bringing the stroller only for those days, or you're gonna, you're gonna book a driver for the day so that you can actually leave the car seat in the car while you're going to visit all of these like longer distance places or, or something The the logistics are extreme. Yeah, absolutely. The, the other nice thing about a lot of like resort holidays is the resort itself will often have a stroller. Interesting. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Uh, and so then once you've thought about, all right, there's the holidays where you're baby wearing, the holidays where you've got a stroller at the resort, um, there's the holidays where you need to bring your everyday stroller because you need something with bigger wheels. Then like option number four is, is okay, I think that we really want a travel stroller for this particular holiday. Um, things to note is that, so now if we look at that second scenario uh, or, or that second consideration with being on the plane itself and in the airport, I think travel strollers, I think the angels sing when you use a travel stroller when you've got a long layover. Right. Like that's where they really start to shine. Yes. Now in Singapore, it is much less likely. Like if you're flying from Singapore, because we are the layover city, it, like it's much less likely that you'll have a layover on your holiday but definitely something to consider um and you know once you've flown one time with a baby and you've been like oh but it was like four hundred dollars cheaper if we had a six hour layover in zurich um so uh, yeah, yeah. If you book that flight you'd be like take all of my money <laughs> absolutely there's no question yeah there's no question I love there's that it. element to it as well mm -hmm. um but um which brings us to car seats and bringing car seats and traveling with our car seats. I mean, that is an essential. Like you said, we don't baby wear, um, you know, in cars. We, you know, we definitely want to be safe. And it is really tricky to understand, you know, there's so many ways that we, you know, all the things that we're bringing and having car seat bags versus boxes and so on. Can you talk a little bit about how we can be smarter about that? And what are the things that you recommend in terms of traveling with car seats? Again, decide if you're going to travel with your car seat. Are you going to rent a car seat when you get there? You rent. Okay. There are pros and cons to that. Um, okay. if, if it's somewhere that you're going back regularly, like say you're going back to see your family and you're going to be going back there twice a year, every year for the next eight years, maybe you buy, you know, a, a long lasting, larger economical car seat that stays there. Is it possible for grandma to, you know, pay for somebody to, um, install the car seat for you the day before you arrive like in 
in in grandma's car can you use grandma's car and and you know if you do need to get a rental car maybe the rental car can go to grandma and you get to use grandma's car that's already all set up or, or, or stuff like that um you know a, a big consideration when traveling with your car seat is the the legal element of it so a lot of car seats that we use in singapore are european certified um european certified um, car seats that the standards themselves are accepted in the most number of countries worldwide but not every country so you know when you go to the states uh, most states in america will not allow even tourists to use european certified car seats so that's like a personal decision that you need to make do you want the car seat do you want to use the car seat where you know the history of it and you've had it with you and um, and uh, and whatnot, but you're aware that it's breaking the law. Right. I mean, I guess too, who's policing that to some degree, right? Police, but, but yeah, police, I suppose. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and, and, and each but, country, yeah. each country has a different appetite for yeah. for um, cracking down on that. Absolutely, definitely. You know, I think Canada's got a really workable legislation where they say sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, you need to be Canadian and certified if you live here. But if you're a tourist and you're on your way out, like you're going through, yes, you can use whatever you brought with you. So that's a super workable. Um, yes, absolutely. Um, you know, one of the other biggest things that's totally horrifying to me, and I know we've spoken about this before, is at the hospital. I've you know been there all night, sitting waiting for my taxi, and I see you know the confinement nanny getting into the front seat with the newborn, no car seat. Whereas my three babies, born in Canada, the nurse comes with you to the car and make sure that you have the baby in the car seat before they allow you to bring them home, which to me is amazing and again just something that we spend so much time on the birth but getting that little one home is actually like that's the biggest risk of, of all things that we, we consider that risk is huge even a small bump you know um so so yeah absolutely in Canada we're much stricter with things like that um and what about front facing car seats I mean, this is something new to me because I'm 100 years old, but I've seen people now, um, newborns, not necessarily needing the front, uh, the back facing, or are they all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they still do. In fact, if anything, over the last, you know, 10 or 15 years, the, the amount of information that we now have about how much safer rear facing seats are is is you know um, wonderful and amazing um 530 percent safer to keep kids rear facing and it's all around how strong their head neck and spine are and at what point they're they're able to sustain a whiplash injury so a whiplash injury is an adult injury children, children don't sustain whiplash mm -hmm. they have what's called internal de decapitation where they're like it's like it, it's just not strong enough so um having kids rear facing for as long as humanly possible I, I like to describe it as like an olympic medal scenario so mm -hmm. if you would like a gold medal for your uh, parenting car seat decisions then try to keep your child rear facing until four or older four years wow and the products nowadays they're they're designed for that so it's really practical to do that um you know, a silver medal would, would you know, if you want to get a silver medal, that's keeping um, the child rear facing until two. And if you'd like a bronze medal, that's keeping the child rear facing until 15 months. Got it. And what about front seat versus back seat? I was also surprised to find people are now putting babies in the front seat. It's a bit of a European concept um, and possible in some scenarios. Right. So the airbag, the frontal airbag is lethal. Um, and what you mentioned before with someone hopping into the front seat holding a baby that's so much more dangerous than hopping into the back seat holding a baby because um you know not much has to happen to trigger that frontal airbag like you could be in an incredibly small prank you could just be sitting at the traffic light someone comes up behind you taps the back of the car you tap the car in front and it just hits the right part of that that's going to trigger that um, airbag sensor and the airbag will come out. Um, and that goes for forward facing children, children in arms, rear facing children. You know, it's almost ubiquitously a, a, like a, 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 a fatal scenario. So um, keeping kids in the back 
and so they're yeah. teenagers no matter how they're traveling is super critical so um, even even older children not yeah. in car seats interesting well yeah. because i guess the until impact they're, until they're, 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 they're teenagers. For a big grown right person with you know even height and everything it's where it's 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 hitting yeah. you exactly so if we look at a 10 year old sitting in the front seat they're a lot shorter than you know seat belts airbags they're all made for adult men okay yeah. so for an adult man it's going to like push in here okay for a child it's just going to catch the top of their head. Wow. So the, you know, uh, so some people have said to me in the past, well, is it a suffocation risk with the airbag? Right. It's not. For a forward-facing child who's sitting in the front seat, it's um, it's a neck-breaking concern wow. Wow. Um, with that frontal airbag. Um, you know, like the the sheer impact of it coming out. I mean, like it's it is a, you've seen the little SRS on the dashboard near the SRS airbag. That means supplemental restraint system. So it's not going to work by itself. It only works when you're using the seatbelt. Right. Um, and so all of these things combined mean that um, it can be very, very lethal to, um, to small children. So the general rule there is until the child is a teenager, not a teenager, like until they have a teen in their age, right they're in the back seat. got it makes good sense and apparently i didn't know this that car seats can expire as well right so that yeah. so, so car seats are largely made out of plastic like that's what's um that's what's you know forming the main structure and foundation of a car seat plastic is a, is a polymer you know it, it, it's it's polymer molecules held together by binding agents and those binding agents will degrade over time and they definitely degrade in the presence of UV. Like, so, you know, you've had um, something plastic on the balcony or toys left out in the sand pit, you pick them well, up. You watch, if you run McCritchie Reservoir, all you see are all the old soles of shoes. Right? Yeah, rubber, all of it really disintegrates here. It, it really loses its integrity much quicker than you thought. Things that I've stored outside in the hallway, for example, they're all falling apart, which to me was amazing. So yeah, definitely Singapore has uh, that element is quite harsh. Yeah, and so and so plastic degrades over time. That process is accelerated in the presence of UV. Mm -hmm. um, and so yeah, plastic car seats won't last forever. And right. the it's the manufacturer who chooses which binding agent to use in that car seat. Um, and that binding agent will have a lifespan before they can no longer guarantee that it can do its job. So um, particularly for car seats that have kind of a short range of usage anyway. So like, you know, baby infant car seats that have the handle on top, you know, at, at most you're going to fit a two-year-old in that seat, you know, a petite two-year-old in that seat. So they will typically have binding agents that don't have huge lengths of time. So the, right. the shortest that I know off the top of my head is a five-year lifespan. Um, some car seats will, most car seats will last in a six to 10 year period. Um, mm -hmm. And it also depends, like the US, the US countdown timer for mm -hmm. when that for when that product will expire starts from the date of manufacture. European manufacturers they put in like a buffer for the shelf time, like average shelf time, and so um, they kind of build a bit more fat into their expiry period. So their expiry periods will typically, not always, but typically start from when you purchase the product because they've already factored in this amount of time that it would be sitting on the shelf. Um, but, you know, the golden rule when it comes to car seats is to check the manual. The manual should be very explicit um, right. when it comes to um, comes to expiries and yeah, interesting that, yeah, and I, I did listen to a few talks that you've done before, because people get given car seats, and they, who reads the manual, you know, like in the blender, you turn it on, you turn it off, you put it in the car, All so I imagine, got, yeah, winging it with the car seat is, is not the, the, yeah, the way. Yeah, and that's what I love about how you can do that, you do that drive-by service, so if people buy a car seat from you, that's included, and, um, and explain a little bit about that, it's a quarterly thing, correct, where you would, um, now it's now it's gosh I think it's monthly now yeah so, so car seats bought from us kind of have like this lifetime support 
yeah yeah kind of, kind of built into them so we'll install them for you from the get-go but um every month we have like a drive through 10 minute car seat checkup clinic kind of thing so you know if you think the baby's getting a bit big for it or you know you took the car seat out to clean and then husband put it back in and you're like oh I would like someone to check this <laughs> Um, oh, that yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that was in your divorce days. We'd be like, uh, or the first car seat that you put in. Listen, we're I love that one of the things because I'm not so uh, used to doing these talks. Please ask your questions, ladies and gentlemen, and moms and dads, um, on the chat so that we can we can um, really find out what it is that's important to you. So, Sunita, you've asked one. I'm a bit nervous about upcoming travel with my baby. Um, we'll be on the cusp of a newborn stroller um, attachment for versus six months plus attachment. Should I just skip the former and bring the car seat instead? So it depends. This is a good question. It depends. Gosh, everything depends. It depends on what okay. your day is going to be like. So sure. um, the it depends how old the baby. Um, okay, so you're saying the baby will, will, will be right on the cusp of the newborn. I, I would bring the seat. Uh, one of the seats don't just bring the the car seat um, but but if you do want to make the change to the six plus seat I can it sounds like you're specifically talking about the babies and yo-yo stroller here the week before you go change the seat over don't do it in a rush see how the baby likes it like you don't want to be making any stuff changes right um, right on the day that you're traveling. Right. Um, the second thing to consider is, are you planning to take the car seat of the stroller into the, into the cabin with you? So if you have booked a full, like a full adult ticket for the child, then they will get allocated a seat. Um, the, the default is that for children under two, they can fly as what's called a lap infant, where they're given this little seatbelt loop and effectively they sit on your lap. And if you're lucky, you'll get the bassinet row seat. Right. And there's like a, a plug in bassinet um, that the airline will provide and it kind of um, a baby can use that when the seatbelt sign is switched off. So in those scenarios, by and large, again, check your airline. Lap infants get mountains of free checked in luggage like usually two pieces with very high weight limits and that's to accommodate you checking in their gear generally lap infants will not get a carry-on luggage allowance ah okay singapore airlines will increase the weight of your carry-on luggage allowance when you're traveling with an infant i think by six kilos but they do not increase the number of pieces that you're allowed to carry on yeah so if you are traveling with a lap infant and you plan to take the stroller into the cabin that will count as your main carry-on item wow Ew, good to know wow so especially if mom's traveling solo it may not be a great idea because then you can't take that big diaper bag you're planning to take again it depends on the class of your travel all that kind of stuff but um, don't make the assumption that the baby can take a carry a carry on stroller because often they can't. Interesting. So that's one thing to think of. Secondly, if you have not booked a full seat for the child, then you cannot bring the car seat into the cabin. Right. The Cybex Cloud Z2 that Sunita has, it is a TUV airline approved car seat. So so long as your airline accepts airline approved car seats which not all do, despite the name. Right. Um, and if you have booked a full fee-paying ticket for the baby, you can take the, the car seat into the cabin. You will no longer have the bassinet seat, but you can put the child's car seat in their allocated seat, do it up with the, the plain seat belt, and the child can sit there. So if you were doing that, that means they do have carry-on luggage, then sure, you can take the stroller. Um, ah, interesting. Wow. Right. I imagine that's airline to airline, but you're using some airlines as the gold standard in the example, which we are all super spoiled here in Singapore. You know, that Changi Airport is like a dream. And, uh, you know, when we fly to our smaller regional countries, <laughs> it takes a whole lot more patience. Wow, right. really but, good. Um, and thank so you. If you were planning to take the babies in, yo-yo into the cabin yeah. and you've decided to not bring 
the stroller seat, you've only got the car seat, you might get stuck in the sense that you cannot take the car seat on board. And so you just have to carry a stroller frame, but there is no seat onto that stroller frame. So I think I would do the six month plus seat. Um, I would do it the week before you fly. Um, I would double check what tickets you're buying. Um, generally, my recommendation is, is well, not generally, but my, my recommendation is if you are going to check in your car seat to put it in a box, which is a bit of a faff, um, but um, it's a lot safer than putting it in um, a bag. Like, like the bag might, might, might protect from scratches and whatnot, but it's, it's not going to, you know, you've seen those videos of what happens to odd-sized luggage when it doesn't perfectly fit on the, on the luggage cart. It'll often fall off. It might get handled um, not as, as well as a suitcase would, and so the risk of damage is quite high. So with yeah. a car it, seat yeah. being in a box, there's two things there. One is if it does get put through the ringer, you can see that on the box because the box will come out looking like it's been through doomsday. Yeah. Um, and then the second thing is the box will crumple and it will absorb some of that impact. So um, there is a better chance that the car seat inside the box would not get damaged. doesn't have to be the car seat box, like the box that your car seat came in. It could be another box. Um, it just needs to fit it well. And do the airlines provide those or not necessarily? No, not the boxes. They don't. They'll provide like a clear plastic garbage bag. Typically. That's right. That's what I've seen too, because I know for bicycles and things. So, you know, that would be something you don't sell that. You just have to find a box that's going to fit your car seat, correct? We, 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 we don't sell them, but we do have a lot of leftover boxes. So okay. all right. Good to know. Good to know. Car seat, you can swing by and just you another reminder there. to all of you watching, sorry to interrupt you, Elise, but please ask questions and unmute yourself. I'd be thrilled to see your beautiful faces and hear your questions live. If you're too shy, please ask in the chat, but this is all for you. Um, you know, we want to know what's really important to you. What are the questions that you have for Elise? She is an mountain of expertise in so many things, um, baby wearing, um, uh, you know, cleaning services that you do. I want to know about that. That sounds like not a lot of fun for whoever's cleaning it. And, um, you know, I just remember my own kids um, and repairs and so on and so forth. And I also want to talk about your new shops. We've got lots of things on the agenda, but I want to make sure we're getting to what's really important to the, the viewers and the people listening in. Anita's got a second question. She said, besides Australia, are there other countries um, with right. peculiar car seat requirements? Um, not necessarily pe peculiar, but you have said that you have a Cybex Cloud Z. That is a European certified car seat. And you can tell by turning your car seat over and it will have a big orange sticker, an E in a circle on that sticker. And that means that it's European certified. So you are... Um, as a general rule, there are exceptions to this rule. As a general rule, taxis all over the world are exempt from car seat legislation, which means that's not me saying that you shouldn't use a car seat, but that's me saying legally, even if your car seat is not recognised in that country, the general rule would be that taxis don't care. So you could use, you know, if you have a European car seat and you want to go to Australia, um, so long as the child is over six months. So Australia's taxi exemption is also rather peculiar. Um, children under six months in a taxi must have an Australian certified car seat. However, you can book a taxi in Australia with a, with a, a car seat for someone under six months. Um, and then I think that there is some point, I can't remember if it's four years or, 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 or something like that where they do need an Australian booster. There's, there's some nuance around that. Um, so the Cloud Z is European. That means if you are a tourist, um, you could not legally use it in a rental car in Australia. You could use it in Canada. Um, you can use it obviously in Europe. Uh, also Asia is kind of pretty chill. Um, uh, but in America, uh, legally, you could not use that in a, in a rental car in the States. Um, and South America is also typically chill, but you would want to um, double check. Um, New Zealand is actually super cool. So you can use your European car seat in New Zealand, no problems. 
Oh, who doesn't love New Zealand? I think everything's yeah. still there. Yeah. <laughs> so in terms of even the way that you place your car seats, you've got front facing kids, rear facing kids. There was a, a question that a bit specific on that someone had mailed in about having, you know, a six year old, a five year old and a newborn or an infant rather. Uh, uh, so is there an order to how we do that? Because once you've, you know, I had three children as well, and it was all about who goes where. Is there a, an order that you would look at or a, a safer way I mean the center obviously there's no seat in between in front of that child so are there who would sit there and, and so on so the if your center seat has the right attachment hardware to use whatever you were going to put there it's actually the safest seat in the car mm, interesting. because it is right in the middle of the bubble like it is as far from an impact point as you can get the problem with the middle seat is it often doesn't have the right attachment point, attachment hardware for us to put what we wanted to put there. And so if we tried to put that product or that child there, we would be doing that in a suboptimal way. Um, and what I mean by that is if you have an ISOFIX car seat mm -hmm. or a latch car seat and the centre seating position does not have latch points or ISOFIX points, it would not be safe to attempt to put that seat in the middle. Um, the, so that's, that's the first like tenant. The second tenant is that we try to put the least protected child in the most protected seating position. Mm -hmm. So rear facing children are the most protected. Right. Yeah. Forward facing next, and then booster seat children or children who are older than booster seat and just using the adult seat belt, they are the least protected. Right. Makes okay. Sense. So. If your center seat has a three point seat belt, so a shoulder belt and a lap belt, that's a great place for it, like a booster seat child to go because mm -hmm. they're, they're in that most protected seating position. Right. Um, in terms of, um, you know, like if you can use a booster seat that has high slides, that's even better. Mm. Um, other tenants to, to, to follow is you must make sure that you're following the height and weight limits for the car seats. Um, when I had a quick look at the car seat names and, and whatnot, it sounded fine. Um, one thing I didn't get a chance to double check, um, but one thing that I would recommend the mom, I think she mentioned that she was using a Silver Cross Simplicity. That's right. Silver, rear, facing. rear facing Silver Cross Simplicity for baby, a front facing uh, Graco Turbo Booster. This is all foreign to me. Great, yeah. <laughs> front facing Graco Forever DLX. No idea what that the, means. The two Graco car seats, they sound American. Yes. Um, the silver yeah. car actually sounds like a European car seat. Yeah. So while that sounds like it's being used in a safe way, one thing to note is it may be illegal. Mm. Um, so that's just something to check. And, and that's not like no judgment. That's just you know, like yeah. just flagging that, that the mum might not realise that. Sure. I just, I just don't think that the British company Silver Cross makes American car seats right now. If they have, that's great, but um, I just didn't think that they were doing that at the moment. Okay, interesting. Tell us about your new place and, and what we can expect. Is that something we can talk about now? I mean, I'm, I'm really excited. I've never been to the original one, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Um, and I know a little bit about it um, from listening to your talks and so on, but what is this going to offer? I know it's in a secret location, which I absolutely love. Um, you yeah, know, you yeah. are fun, Elise. I'm surprised that we won't have to, you know, have a treasure hunt to get there. I don't know how else we could make it. Oh, I love it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about the new place. So we've been at Passive Panjang for, um, actually, before I forget, one point just to finish yeah. from that previous one is um, if you, so, so our car seats, they have like this lifetime support. If you want that support, but you didn't buy your car seat from us, um, you can still jump on either the Pram Fox or the Taxi Baby website. Um, you can click, I think it's either services or consultations and you can book a paid consultation with me either in person or online. Um, so that service is available if you if you want to you know like pick my brain but the car seats that you got or the car seats that you will get won't be coming from us um, right close that book so um the new place yeah we're in the midst of the reno 
my husband's just been calling me actually he's downstairs trying to get the lumber off the truck so fingers crossed he's okay um the yeah so we've been at Passive Panjang for two years okay and like a tidy but nondescript office building which has really suited our needs um like I mentioned at the start we're a really strange retail concept because like people can't just wander through and browse it's a very structured and supported experience with us because I've worked out a way to make it really efficient and so the goal is not to waste your time and also not to waste our time and so because all of our appointments are one-on-one uh, it kind of makes it even more important that we make sure that everybody is like prepared for those appointments so there's homework modules in advance and sort of thing um, and yeah, so um, we're moving into the CBD. We're moving into Bogus. Oh, okay. Which is my old stomping ground. So when we first moved here, we lived here. And this is when we had our first baby. Um, lunch options for you. <laughs> yeah, finally. Um, and yeah, so um, we're, you know, the wallpaper's gone up. We're just doing the wainscoting today. I love um, it. Uh, a big change that's going to happen here is we've got a waiting room, which is nice, so that um, to help us kind of handle that transition between appointments. Um, you know, the car seats, the baby wearing and the strollers, the experience will be very much like it was at the previous shop. Um, you know, we will, to a large extent, we will still curate those options for customers. So if they're coming to see double strollers, we make a bit of a change to the displays. If they're coming to see running strollers, you know, oh, same, okay. same kind of thing. We're not one of those shops who's got like six of the one stroller, but in different colors put up. Okay, um, right. Some people definitely like that, don't get me wrong. No, no, um, no. But for me, the way that my brain works, um, it's, I think it contributes to this feeling of like decision paralysis and it being a bit overwhelming. Yeah. Um, so we do try to have just, you know, only the, what we need on display. Um, so, yeah, other than the waiting room and the fact that now we're right in the CBD, right next to an MRT station, so it should be a lot easier um, for everyone to find us. Um, the other big change is that we have our five fully styled nurseries. Wow, that is exciting. Yeah. So, that's so, so that's, that's, I suppose, the big, the big difference. Because when it comes to car seats and, and strollers and, and baby carriers, I kind of do make all of our customers be very practical about that side of things. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, you know, try and fold it. Can you lift it? It's not so much like how pretty is it? Yeah. But you are allowed to expend all of your aesthetic dreams and hopes on the nursery element. Right. Um, I suppose that, that's the difference. So um, I've had just an awesome time working with Samantha from Hay Montgomery. Right. Uh, she's one of the really sought after nursery designers in Singapore. So she's designing all of our spaces. Oh, fun. And it'll just feel like it'll look like it's in your house. So. Oh, I love it. Oh, I just love it. And you know, the other thing that as doulas, we see um, as well as to keep that bedroom safe, right? So knowing how to put your baby down, and we know about back to sleep, and we know about, you know, the benefits of that. But I still see lots of pillows. And I see lots of cocoonas that have been recalled in so many countries in the world for different reasons. Um, you know, a lot of the midwives hate them, um, you know, and knowing when and when, when to use it, how to to use it safely you know airflow you know in my days we still had bumper pads which you know i mean yeah, you know, and much. lots of uh, what are they mosquito nets and you know it looks beautiful but i'm like let's just tuck those and tie them down you know mm -hmm. um there's lots of bits that we still really are lacking information here in singapore it's not so and proclaimed you walk into a shop and that that crib in that shop is has bumpers and yeah. has a has a newborn cocoon or nest or whatever, which is nice, yeah. thick synthetic comforter. <laughs> yep. Yep. Pillows, toys. Yes. Um, toys. So, you know, the, the message that that is sending, you know, you know, it's, it's the, the, the SIDS rules are not lovely and clear to understand really. And, and the main tenant for that when it comes to furnishing where the baby's going to sleep is a naked cot. 
for like a, a, a naked crib. Choose a really pretty sheet. Mm -hmm. And that was it. Yeah. And secondhand. I mean, that's another thing. People want to buy secondhand items. Uh, my understanding is, okay, you can get a secondhand crib, but you really should replace that mattress. Yeah. And that's the safety, that's the safety and the hygiene guidelines. Actually, um, even if it's inside your own family and you're just using it for your second child, the, the safety guidelines these days are uh, new child, new mattress. Interesting. Wow. And why is that? Tell, tell us why that is. Yeah. So a, a lot of it is around like how that mattress is kept. So mm. like of all of the things that are really hard to keep in tip top condition, especially in moldy human Singapore, it is. Oh the God, yeah. I can't even imagine everything molds here. Even people, you know, friends of ours that live in black and white houses, especially, or go on a holiday for two or three months, there's no air con, there's no airflow. They come back and their furniture is full of mold. And the last thing you want is a naked bed with a newborn in it, with a moldy mattress that you've kept in your bomb shelter till your next one came, right? And also like but how it was, how it was stored, yeah. like, like mattresses oh, were hard to yeah. store. Um, they'll often end up underneath something. Right. And so that could cause a depression and, you know, the the firmness and the consistency of that sleep surface is um, it's quite it's, it's really quite important for newborns. Makes good sense. And what what other items, what new products are you bringing in? I mean, now we're, you're adding these beautiful nurseries. I can't wait. In my mind, I'm thinking Pottery Barn. <laughs> I, used, I used to hang out there. Just, to, you know, to right. yeah. like, like, like we've got, in fact, this afternoon, the wallpaper installers are coming in. We've got three Love custom it. murals going up. Um, yeah, they'll all be very different styles. Um, it's really like it's, well, if you are my kind of personality type, um, I'm the kind of type who's like, great, that looks fantastic. Can you please just replicate that in my house? Absolutely. <laughs> one of the reasons I wanted to um, collaborate with the interior designer is because then people can go, all right, can you make that all happen in my house now? Um, uh, and then, um, sorry, what we said, uh, new products, that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so a couple of things that have come through, like it used to just, you know, if we're talking about breast pumps and whatnot, it used to really just be the Spectra S1 that was like really leading the charge for the hospital grade pumps. Spectra have two new dual powered pumps now. Yeah. There are, I would, I would call, this is my personal opinion. Okay. Um, I would call Spectra's dual powered pumps niche specialty pumps. I still okay. think that the Spectra S1 Plus is still the most well-balanced, well-rounded um, right. hospital-grade pump. And if a mother was purchasing a pump prenatally, I still think that's my go-to. Yeah, yeah. I, I personally think that, you know, breast pumps are like shoes. Mm -hmm. You don't know what shoes you need to wear until you worked out your outfit. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, the Spectra S1 Plus is like, the white leather sneakers you could wear it with a dress you could wear it with shorts you know. absolutely absolutely but you know if you specifically need running shoes or you specifically need sandals you don't know that yet so that's I, I think by and large for most of our customers who are like oh let's see what happens with breastfeeding I think that they will buy a better product for them if they wait until after the baby's born Yes. You know, lots of times we recommend that as well as doulas. We see, um, you know, but occasionally we'll get a baby in NICU and then we've thrown things, which was absolutely unexpected. And then we need that pump. One of the things I love about your business too, is that sometimes we can get that, you know, same day or within a few hours, which no one does. I'm usually, we're on every hotline trying to see who's open and what flange size they need. This is also really important. And the tubing and blah, it goes on and on. And if it's not right and if, if it's not someone who really gets the product you know lovely Nora who's 26 working at mother care she has no idea what we're even talking about you know I'm just making you know you need someone who really gets it and is asking the right questions so that we can get these mamas and dads what they need quickly um, so that's also another consideration is I love that about your business that you really get it you get that we need it now we, I don't <laughs> try to sell pumps to people prenatally in fact I know actually a lot of the doulas and I often don't see it eye to eye on this I do 100 1000 percent agree that all yeah. mums should learn how to hand express yes 
I do think a lot of mums, or I had a really hard time with it. Like for some reason, overshare, like I could hand express on my left boob, but I got the heebie-jeebies on my right and I couldn't do it. Um, And so where mums don't have an electric breast pump before the baby's born, I think it is handy to have a, a hand pump. Yeah, I agree. Or, you know, for emergencies, you know, just to use at 3 a.m. when the baby should have been up at 2 to have a feed. Yeah, it absolutely. Take the edge off. Yeah, the, girls, the girls have to be emptied now. <laughs> Never, ever had boobs in my whole life until I got pregnant. And then it was spectacular holiday photos. Only top up. Yeah, but but again, then, it's true. So, we really just hand express on day one, two, and three. But sometimes we need the stimulation if we know that little one, you know, we're, we, is exclusively now going to be pumping and, and so on. Um, and sometimes we can't find the products we need quick enough. Um, the other thing is knowing how to measure. One breast may be slightly different than the other. And that may be a lot of the troubleshooting um, is knowing that someone can help you with that and yeah. knowing exactly what franchise to get and how to make it work um the, yeah. our general rule on that is you measure your nip the nipple yep. base so not the areola like right. the, the base of the nipple horizontally vertically both sides often they're different yes and then you go for the flange size that is above that right and then you go for you also get the flange size above that as well because we don't know how elastic your nipples are that's and right these flanges are 11 dollars. we're talking you know these breast pumps are between 500 and a thousand dollars right um, you know the thing that you're experimenting on is the flange and if it, if it means that you're buying six flanges just because you're trying to work out exactly what size you need so be it but yeah. using the wrong size flange with a breast pump can make your $500 pump feel like a $50 pump. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, it's knowing how to use what you've got and um, and making, you know, and also it can be very different on both sides. And so um, even, even, with the, even with the hand pump that we recommend, yeah. pumps, we will, we actually custom assemble that from like flange parts. So oh, that's amazing. Ones have a bit, so we will give them two flange sizes, a handle, and then like the bottle connector and the, the and the valves and stuff that's needed. So it's not always right because you know after a couple of days of breastfeeding, often the nipples are a lot bigger. But at least your start, you, the starting point is closer than than not. Absolutely. And there's nothing like trying to sterilize it, read the manual, figure it all out while the newborn is screaming and it's two in the morning and no one's had any sleep for the last 48 hours. Yeah, yeah. The, first time, the first time I tried to use my Spectra breast pump was three in the morning, baby yep. had slept through um, and I couldn't switch it on. And that's because you have to hold the button for four seconds, not yep. three seconds. Oh, yes. like, <laughs> go on on (laughs) yeah I actually demo a few things that way and I actually make a point of saying this because dads will call and say it's not turning on I'm like please hold down and watch hold down to turn it off again yeah honestly yeah it's the franticness well you really make people's lives a lot easier and simpler and just by who you are you're so down to earth and so knowledgeable and um, generous in your sharing I think that um, you know we're so thrilled to have this lovely community and in that book all together I think that we're really lucky in Singapore we have wonderful breastfeeding support we have amazing doulas and and OBs and um, you know the whole gamut of people that are you know doing baby wearing as well which you also do we haven't talked about that too much we could probably say a few things um but this makes up a community that supports these lovely new families and i think we're really lucky in singapore for so many reasons and and i thank you for assembling all of that knowledge and um really giving it away very generously i think um it's it's a big deal we're a transient community as well but we work with everyone we've got so many incredible people here locals as well as expats and so i think that um you know this is another part that is unique as well it's not one or the other right we're working in a a lot of communities um is there anything else you want to talk about before we finish we're almost at the end of our time Um, is there anyone else that has a question we 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 chat so much i think i've got a few a few ideas that i had started but not finished okay so so super quickly one sentence press pumps the Spectra S1 Plus is still probably the most well balanced. The, yeah. There are three other hospital grade pumps now very easily on the market that are also worth considering. 
One is the Spectra Dual S. This is a dual power. Okay. Yeah. Others with um, asymmetric lactation. So perhaps you have a high flow boob and a low flow boob. Yeah. yeah. Um, it does let you have one motor per per breast from that single pump unit. Interesting. So you can okay. have like a high setting on one and a low setting on the other. Um, sure. But it, the downside to that pump is it must be plugged into the power outlet the whole time. It does not have a rechargeable battery. Got it. The Spectra Dual Compact mm -hmm. is a smaller pump, still has two motors, battery doesn't quite last as long. Everything has to be a bit of a compromise. The, the, the feature that the Dual Compact had to drop was the frequency or the mode, which I don't know a non-embarrassing way to describe it, but it's the pattern or the musical pattern that the pump makes. So is it going it's the yeah it's the sound that it makes so it doesn't give you options for that mm. you have what one one sort of default option and then the third one that's only just come out this month and is super exciting is the lv stride mm, okay. so lv is that very famous hands-free right. wireless tubeless pump that you can wear in your bra while you go about your business and they have just launched their stride which is a hospital grade pump right because we um, were getting feedback that that one was you know mediocre at the old one or certain it's again it's like shoes like the lv is like a stiletto it's only for certain situations that only for certain it. Pumps. and so you know postnatally it's often because the motor is so strong it's often just not strong enough so you know, again, you know, mums would call up and be like, this is what I've got. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm experiencing. And I'd be like, wow, based on that. Yeah, sure. Maybe it is going to do the job for you. Um, so the LV stride, it has one like power unit, which yeah. will clip onto your jeans, like clip onto your pants or go in your pocket. And then that has tubes up to two wearable flanges that go into your bra. So there are still tubes. It's not quite, you know, but at least, you know, initial feedback from customers is that it does have this, like the suction and the strength that, that they need from a hospital grade pump. So that's going to be really interesting to see how that goes. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's especially helpful for all those beautiful mums out there who are exclusive pumpers, which there are a ton of in Singapore. And it's because they're going back to work at two to three months, um, you know, and there may not even be a room to pump in. So this yeah. is such a massive benefit. It's a game changer for those ladies. Um, so I think that's really good to know. And um, and also that you're getting good feedback because again, One as more new product that came out. Yeah. Spectra, what well, May Mum for Spectra, but huh. for the Spectra pumps, there is now, I think they call it a lazy flange or mm -hmm. a laid back flange, a laid back flange. It's on our website, but it's a flange oh, that yeah. you can have while you're reclining in bed. Yes, I love that. It's still yeah. a big deal as well. Yeah. That is a huge deal. Yeah. I mean, that mimics, you know, uh, sideline breastfeeding. If you can pump on your back, you can do anything. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Lise, for all of, of, of your amazing tips and knowledge. And uh, we look forward to the opening of your new place. Oh gosh, and, well, everyone will have to follow us on social. I'm super quiet on social, but I promise I will start doing stuff. Um, I said that every year. Yeah. <laughs> Couple up for box sake. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I suppose now, Dee, I'm going to have to have a treasure hunt next week to, <laughs> to announce what we are. All right. Yeah, and then we'll talk next time about dog strollers and pet uh, <laughs> babies and pets. Two markets, right? Similar but different. All right. On that note, have a great afternoon. Good luck with the renovations. I hope your husband's okay with all the lumber. <laughs> all right. Bye, ladies. Bye, everyone who's watching. Thanks for tuning in. Bye for now. <laughs>